You're watching Shalom TV, celebrating Jewish culture. Funding for Shalom TV has been provided by the following. and by viewers like you. I am proud and privileged to welcome all of you here. 800 devoted and committed Zionists whose love of Israel and the Jewish people is evident by your presence of simply being here. I want to especially welcome the over 100 college students here tonight. Welcome future Jewish leaders of America. All of you are among the most devoted and clear-thinking Zionists in America. And that's whether you're Jewish or Christian. Unlike some other Jewish leaders and Jewish organizations, we at the ZOA love and appreciate every Christian Zionist in America. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. These Christian Zionists support Israel not only, as President Lyndon Baines Johnson once said, because it's the right thing to do, but also because they believe in the Torah, in the Hebrew Bible, which makes it clear that God Almighty gave Eretz Yisrael the promised land to the Jews. I often say, why is it called the promised land? Simply because God promised it to the Jewish people in the scriptures. And this is believed by billions of people around the world, not just a handful of people in Yehuda and Shamron. You know, the Talmud says, the Talmud says that the world exists only because there are 36 righteous people in the world at any one time. But looking around here tonight, I think that Hashem, that God, has to change that number. The number should be 796 people, all of you. I do believe and know that if strong and courageous and activists and outspoken Jews and Christians like you here in this room existed in the 30s and 40s, and they did not, I know that world history would have been different. Certainly Jewish history would have been different. Let's pledge tonight, as Mr. Beck reminds us regularly, to do all we can to make sure history never goes in that direction again. Never. <laughs> but if we had learned some lessons from that awful time, never again dare we be the Jews of silence. We certainly are not at the Zionist Organization of America. We are the oldest pro Israel organization. And in addition, by the way, to the heads of ZOA that Steve, my dear friend Steve Goldberg mentioned, he may not have mentioned the most notable president of all who headed the ZOA in the 50s. His name is Rabbi Max Nussbaum of Los Angeles. Why do I say he's the most notable? Because it is Rabbi Nussbaum who converted Sammy Davis Jr. and Elizabeth Taylor to Judaism. Elizabeth Taylor, by the way, was also a Brandeis awardee and raised millions of dollars for Israel. Elizabeth Taylor even married several Jewish men. Most Jewish women don't do this. Now, Title VI of the Civil Rights Act protected blacks and Hispanic students from harassment and discrimination, but not Jewish students. After a six-year ZOA campaign that everyone told us to stop because it was hopeless, 
And I'm talking about ADL did and AJ Committee did. We didn't. And I am pleased and proud to tell you that the U.S. Department of Education Office of Civil Rights announced an important policy change this past year benefiting Jewish students in elementary, secondary schools and universities. They declared that they now will enforce Title VI of the Civil Rights Act to protect not only blacks and Hispanic students, but also every Jewish student in colleges and in high schools. In part due to our work at UC Irvine, a number of Muslim student unions, students who wouldn't let Ambassador Michael Oren speak, were now suspended for six months or more from having anything there. In an LA Times article written by a Muslim student union person whose name is Omar Kurdi, I have in my hand, he said, the decision comes after several months of intense pressure by the Zionist Organization of America. The ZOA's threats were intended solely to strong-arm university administrators into harsh action against us. It appears that the ZOA's were successful. It worked, said Omar Kurdi in trying to malign us. We also, by the way, filed an amicus brief to the Supreme Court, which we helped begin. This brief is about the fact that American Jews who were, who were born in Jerusalem, on their passports, right now, all they're allowed to put in place of birth is Jerusalem. We have filed a suit, along with Nathan Lewin, that the State Department must, must enforce U.S. law permitting any American Jew born in Jerusalem to put for place of birth Jerusalem, Israel, not simply Jerusalem. We bring 50 Jews to Israel every winter vacation. And unlike other organizations, we don't just bring them to Tel Aviv and Haifa. We bring them to Maladumim, Efrat, Ariel, Chabran, all over Yehud and Shamron, past the so-called Green Line. And we are now supporting a law that Israel is trying to pass. Millions of dollars are given by foreign nations to organizations, anti-Israel organizations within Israel to promote an anti-Israel agenda. Millions of dollars. Now there's a law in Israel that's trying to get passed to limit any country's gifts to $5,000. Why should countries like France and Italy and other European countries be supporting anti-Israel organizations in Israel. If they don't like Israel's policies, they can go through normal diplomatic channels and promote their beliefs, not funding groups within Israel itself. And I will now tell you something very disappointing and very distressing. The American Jewish Committee has called on the Knesset to reject the bills that could sharply curb foreign donations to these Israel non-governmental groups. They called to stop this legislation. ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, yes, I name names. They should be proud. It's on their website. The Abe Foxman of ADL said, we are concerned that the passage of these bills could negatively impact Israel's vibrant civil society and democratic conditions. We urge you to destroy and end these bills. Abe Foxman, the ADL. What is wrong with our people? Because of our work, the Passion Authority put out a, a press release, the Passion Authority, saying, the Ministry of Information has denounced in a strong worded statement the incitement campaign provoked by the Zionist Organization of America and the U.S. against the Palestinian Authority as a flagrant intervention in the internal affairs of the Palestinians. They don't like us, ladies and gentlemen. And the top Arab-American activist, James Zogby, wrote, and I quote, the vocal and muscular ZOA 
has risen like a phoenix, has forced newspapers to change maps, forced politicians to change their votes. The ZOA's efforts must be combated, said the Arab lobbyist James Zogby. <laughs> if ZOA's campaigns go in answers, ZOA will win. With your help, ladies and gentlemen, we will win. My basic message, we dare not, as Mr. Beck reminds us, ignore the truth of the ongoing Arab-Islamic war against Israel, Jews, and the West. I am personally getting sick and tired of leaders around the world continuously saying what some of us, some of us might want to hear, but not the truth which we need to hear. They keep saying, we can have peace in the Middle East, just give a little more land, a little more money to the Arabs, a little more restraint, a little more appeasement, they tell us. And this will end the war against Israel. Well, now let me state my opinion of the truth. The Arabs do not want peace with the Jewish state of Israel. The Arabs never wanted peace with the Jewish state of Israel. And let me tell you something else. As much as we all want Israel to have peace with the Arabs, Israel can and will survive and thrive without peace with the Arabs, as I've had since 1948. We sh American leaders, American Jewish leaders and Israeli leaders should remind the world the Arabs were offered a state in 1937, they said no. In 1948, they said no. From 48 to 67, they controlled all of Judea and Samaria, Gaza, East Jerusalem, the Sinai and the Golan. They never created a state. In 2000, Ehud Barak offered them a state on 95% of the land. They said no. 2008, Ehud Olmert offered them a state on 98% of the land. They said no. What does it take for us to understand? They want Israel's destruction, not peace with the Jewish state of Israel. And I must hold up this map of the Middle East. The orange are the 23 Arab countries, double the size of the United States of America. This blue that you can really not see in the center is the Jewish state of Israel. It is one-eighth of one percent of the lands of the Middle East. And yet leaders and presidents and others from around the world say the way to solve this problem is called land for peace. Who are they asking to give up the land, ladies and gentlemen? Who are they asking to give up the land? The whole thing is nonsense. Congress, the administration, and Israel must start revealing these painful truths. We must reveal this. The Oslo process had three legs. They have all broken. One, they were supposed to fight and prevent terrorism. They don't arrest terrorists. They demand terrorists be released. Now, if you want peace with Israel, why do you demand that terrorists be released who might complicate peace by murdering more Jews. If you really want peace, you want those terrorists to remain in prison. They, don't, they didn't outlaw terrorist groups as Oslo required. They didn't get rid of illegal weapons. They didn't close bomb factories. They've done none of this. Instead, this is Mahmoud Abbas, the head of the Palestinian Authority, and Kilad Mishal, the head of Hamas. They signed a treaty on May 4th of this year in Egypt, making an alliance. Hamas and Fatah now are allied. The Hamas Charter not only calls for Israel's destructions, ladies and gentlemen, Article 7 calls for the murder of every Jew. It calls for the murder of every Jew. It's a Nazi document, and nobody says this. No newspaper says they're calling for the murder of most of the people in this room, and yet, we are considering setting up a state where Hamas controls Gaza and Fatah controls Judea and Samaria. This is absurd. And I'm calling on members of Congress 
the administration and Israel to make this truth clear. These are Nazi terrorists. They're supposed to accept Israel's right to exist. The Fatah, not the PLO, the Fatah covenant, Abbas's covenant, calls, calls for Israel's destruction repeatedly. There's not a single map in the Palestinian Authority that shows Israel, even within the 67 border. It shows only Palestine. The textbooks refer to the Zionist entity. Palestinian ambassadors, only in the last month, ladies and gentlemen, from Brazil to Lebanon and elsewhere in South America, have made public speeches in the last month saying Israel must disappear. Israel must disappear. Where is the outrage? Where is the outrage against the Hamas alliance? Where is the outrage against the Palestinian Authority officials saying Israel must disappear? Instead, we continue to fund the Palestinian Authority to the tune of almost $1 billion a year. This money must stop. If you can see this, you may not. This is the emblem, ladies and gentlemen, that Mahmoud Abbas and Salam Fayyad commissioned to be the emblem for the Palestinian Authority. You see a shape of all of Israel with a kafia over all of it. You see Arafat in the middle with a circle. You see a Kalishnikov rifle promoting terrorism. If you want peace with the Jewish state, is this the emblem you use you commissioned to have made as your official emblem? I've never seen this emblem in the New York Times, in the LA Times, anywhere in the country. I've never heard a single public American official or even Israeli official hold this up and speak about it, saying, unless you rescind this despicable emblem, all bets are off. No negotiations, no money, no concessions, nothing. Why are we not speaking out against something like this that tells the whole truth, tells the whole truth? The third leg of Oslo was to end hate speech, end the promotion of hatred and violence against Jews in their media, in their schools, in their sermons. How do you think, ladies and gentlemen, Palestinian Authority gets Arabs to be willing to be suicide bombers, to kill themselves that they think this is a mitzvah. It's a wonderful thing to murder Jews, even if it means killing themselves. Because in their schools, they have textbooks and, and lectures and articles saying the Jews are evil, the Jews are the enemy, the Jews are fanatics, the Jews kill Muslims and Christians, the Jews are treacherous, the Jews are the enemies of the prophets, the Jews foment wars and are evil racists. And yet, this sort of thing is ignored. In their newspapers, they say they Jews inject Arab babies at Hadassah Hospital with the AIDS virus, with cancer viruses. They poison Arabs regularly. This is in their newspapers regularly, not here or there. And this is in the official Palestinian Authority newspapers. Mahmoud Abbas just made a speech saying Israel's aim is the destruction of humanity and refers to Haifa and other cities in Israel as Palestine. They honor terrorists who have murdered Jews regularly. Mahmoud Abbas and his officials in the last few months have made speeches, ladies and gentlemen, saying once we get a state of Palestine, not one Jew will be allowed to live in it. This is the height of racism, and everyone has been silent about it. Imagine if Israel said not one Arab will be allowed to live in Israel or not one Christian would be allowed to live in Israel. The world would go berserk. The Arabs are saying this regularly and we ignore it and we ignore it at our peril. We must speak out about these issues. And let me tell you something else. After the horrible massacre of the Fogel family, you remember the five kids who were murdered and the two parents. The very next day, ladies and gentlemen, Mahmoud Abbas and Salam Fayyad named an entire square after Dalal Maghrabi, 
the biggest Jew-killing terrorist the Palestinian Authority has ever known. She murdered 37 Jews. The next day after this massacre, they named it after this woman. And there was hardly a peep from anyone in the world or from any Jewish organization. A few, but not many. Every time a suicide bomber kills himself, the Palestinian Authority publishes posters such as this one. It's a real poster. I took it off a of high school in Ramallah. This is a man who murdered Jews. This is Eged buses being blown up. It's a Jewish star with blood flowing through it. And the headline in the Arabic says, our hero, our martyr, our leader. They honor and glorify terrorists. Why are we silent and saying, unless you stop this, unless you stop naming dozens of schools, streets, and sports teams after Jew-killing terrorists, we will have nothing to do with you. No state, no money, no recognition, no meetings, no nothing. And this incitement works. 70, in a recent poll, I'm talking the last month, 73% of Palestinian Arabs, 73%, ladies and gentlemen, support the murder of every Jew. You hear what I just said? 73% when asked, do you believe in murdering all the Jews? 73% say yes. So this works. These words are powerful. The Talmud teaches us that words are so powerful that a word can hang, a mountain can hang by the thread of a single word. That's what the Talmud says. That's how powerful words are. In a recent poll, because of all this incitement, 85% of Palestinians say they oppose peace if it means any compromise on the right of return, Jerusalem, borders, or settlements. 85% said no compromise or we don't want peace. But these truths are not promoted and talked about in the United States of America or Europe or even much in Israel. And finally, we say the way to solve this problem is to set up a Palestinian state. Just give them a state and things will be fine. When congressmen say that to us, we say Syria has a state, Iran has a state, North Korea has a sovereign state. Are they lovely? Are they peace-loving entities? No, it's the opposite. By their having states and sovereignty, they have more strength to promote the underlying agenda of fighting the West, fighting Jews, and fighting Christians. It makes it worse, statehood, when you have this type of culture, not better. That's why we dare not establish a state. And Mahmoud Abbas in the New York Times op-ed when asked, will a state end all of your claims? He said, and I'm quoting his, what he wrote, Palestine's admission to the UN as a state would pave the way for the internationalization of the conflict as a legal matter. It would pave the way for us to pursue claims against Israel at the UN, human rights treaty bodies, and the International Court of Justice. He openly says, statehood won't end it. So why on earth should we even dream of such a possibility? Where is the outrage of this sort of statement? And let me tell you, when members of Jewish, or leaders of Jewish organizations met with President Obama last March at the White House, not only didn't he mention any of the things I just talked about, he said this to us, it was written publicly, so I'm not telling you what he said. He said this, President Obama said, to the Jewish leaders gathered in that room, is Israel serious about peace? I wonder. You U.S. Jewish leaders must talk to the, your Israeli friends and relatives and search your souls. How badly do you really want peace? Israelis think this peace business is overrated. Their life is good. Their economy is good. Things are quiet. They must ask themselves, is this sustainable? Do you really, really want peace? This is what he said to us. Then he added, we all know that Mahmoud Abbas and Salam Fayyad are very sincere about peace. But will Netanyahu make 
the territorial concessions necessary, that's what the Palestinians doubt. I've given you the exact quotes I was scribbling like crazy while I was sitting there, couldn't believe my ears when I heard these words from the President of the United States. And finally, American Jews are getting it. For the first time since Oslo began, over half of the American Jews oppose the establishment of a Palestinian state. Thank God Almighty. Iran is screaming their goal is to destroy Israel, the United States, and the West. We dare not let them get nuclear weapons. George Bush Sr. wrote about the Holocaust. How many lives might have been saved if appeasement had given way to force earlier on in the 30s and 40s? How many Jews might have been spared? We dare not have the ability to make this type of statement later in the future. And we might, God forbid, if Iran gets nuclear weapons, we must stop this for sure. And I will end by quoting from the head of the United Nations, who said, the whole world is demanding that Israel withdraw and give up more land. I don't think the whole world, he said, including the friends of Israel, the friends of the Israeli people and the friends of the Israeli government, can be wrong. He said, can the whole world be wrong and only you Jews right? Well, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. When Israel destroyed the Iraqi nuclear reactor, the whole world condemned Israel. Israel was right. The whole world was wrong. The whole world was polytheistic. We Jews alone preach be belief in one God. We preach the day of rest. The whole ancient world mocked us as a lazy people. We were right. The whole world was wrong. The whole world said we crucified a Jew, Jesus, as if Jews had such a punishment in our code. And we insisted such a thing was beyond impossible. The whole world said we used children's blood to make matzah. We denied it. They said we poisoned the wells of Europe. The whole world was wrong. We were right. The Crusades, the blood libels, the Talmud burnings in England and France leading those nations to expel Jews for centuries, the Spanish and Portuguese inquisitions, the ghettos, the Mortara case in Italy, Dreyfus in France, Bayless in Russia, and a century's persecution of Soviet Jewry, the Holocaust, Kurt Waldheim in, in Australia. Each time Europe stood by silently or actively participated in murdering us, we alone were right and the whole world was wrong. And ladies and gentlemen, once again, we Jews are right that the Palestinian Arabs want to destroy us, destroy Israel, and murder as many Jews as they can. We are right, and the whole world is wrong. And it is high time for public officials in Israel, public officials in America, public officials in Europe, to start telling the whole truth of the Palestinian Arabs, that their goal is our destruction, not a state in any way, shape, or form. Until we make this message clear, and after we make this message clear, the world will have less sympathy for the Palestinian Authority, more sympathy for Israel, will understand our predicament much better. It's time to go the, on the offensive and stop with this defensive nonsense. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah.